All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, I'm Walid Ali Dean. Um, I work as uh, an instructional designer at the Center for Innovation and Teaching and Learning. Uh, today's uh, launch um, is uh, about lessons that we learn from uh, the um, award winners in uh, teaching and learning at um, AUS. Um, with this session, we have a um, list of very uh, distinguished panelists. We have Dr. Shiri Weiler from the Performing Arts Program and the College of Arts and Sciences. We have Dr. Ashraf Khalaf from the Department of Accounting at the School of Business Administration. And finally, we have Dr. Hassan Nashash uh, from the Department of Electrical Engineering um, at the College of Engineering. This session is moderated by Miss um, um, Cindy. Miss, I'm sorry, Miss Cindy Baker. Um, <laughs> yeah, memory. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, we're really happy to have uh, Miss Cindy Baker um, uh, moderating this um, session. Cindy Baker is a registered project management uh, professional, and uh, she has been working in the project management for over. 20 years. She has worked in the industry as a consultant with Arthur, Arthur Anderson and as a project manager for Fortune 500 and privately held companies like Hilton Hotels, Sara Lee, and uh, Sprint Nextel. Um, Cindy volunteers with the Project Management Institute, PMI, as a global Congress subject matter expert submission reviewer and in the Global Accreditation Center. She also served as a vice president on PMI's UAE chapter board of directors. In addition to the PMI accreditations work she's, she's doing, she's also volunteering with the ABIT to, um, to accredit information technology and information system programs in schools of engineering around the uh, globe. Cindy is a senior instructor at the School of Business Administration here at AUS. She is teaching project management, enterprise resource planning, business intelligence, and management and business information systems. Having demonstrated leadership capacity in the areas of teaching and learning, Sandy is um, one of our distinguished faculty fellows at the Center for Innovation and Teaching and Learning uh, for the academic year uh, 2020 and 2021. CITL faculty fellows like Sandy help address teaching and technological challenges and identify specific best teaching practices for the entire campus. Really to have you, um, Sandy, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. All right, thank you for the introduction, Waleed. I appreciate it. Um, again, just to remind everyone that this session is being recorded. And so thank you for joining us. Uh, we've called this session Passing It Forward, Lessons on Teaching from the award winners. Of course, we want to hear from those who have been, uh, who have received a teaching award. And so uh, thank you for the three of you for joining us. Um, I wanted to start and ask each of you to maybe do a two or three minute introduction. Um, we'll start with Sherry. We'll, we'll go ladies first. But Sherry, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, tell us the classes that you teach and then also your delivery style. Um, and this is for all three of you. But, you know, is it is it a lecture? Do you have a flipped classroom? Is it group discussion? Just just give us a little bit of an idea, a peek into your classroom. Okay, thank you for inviting me today. Um, I'm honored. I'm flattered. I can't believe I'm doing this because I don't think I have anything more to say than most teachers here already know, but I'm delighted to share with you what little I do have. I teach Music 101, which is a class voice and music notation. And in that class, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of put it together. The delivery style is the final project for the class is writing a song and performing it. And the students in the class receive detailed instruction also in the physical construction, physiology, and proper use of the human voice. I also teach a Music 200, which is Introduction to European Classical Music. This is a Gen Ed lecture class, but it is also a required class for music and or theater minors. So the class has to be a little bit more uh, detailed for those who are minoring, but still general enough so that those who uh, are only doing this for their three credit hour uh, class to graduate can also enjoy the class. I also teach uh, Music 250. 
52 and 352, which are applied and advanced applied lessons in voice. This is applied learning in which students receive a one on one instruction. They are also required to participate in the AUS choir if they are taking applied lessons. I teach theater 301, which is music theater, musical theater history. And that is also a required minor class for theater and or music minors and also a gen ed subject. I have taught in the past music 356, which is musical theater preparation. In that class, I musically direct and conduct our AUS musical productions. That would be everything from teaching the performers their notes and rhythms to arranging the music for the players that we hire to conducting eight performances of each production. So I kind of am a jack of all trades where uh, teaching here is concerned. Thanks. All right, thanks for that. Um, Ashraf, tell us a little bit uh, about the classes that you teach and your delivery style. Okay, first, uh, thank you so much for actually inviting me here. It's my pleasure to be with you. And uh, I am teaching a, a variety of classes. Like, you know, I've been here for like since 2006. Um, I started first with financial accounting classes, like introduction to financial accounting, in which we teach students how to prepare like you know, the transactions, how to prepare financial statements, how to be able to read the statements, and how to make decisions actually if they are interested in, uh, in understanding what the company is doing, comparing to other companies. Uh, in, in, in the financial accounting, we have more than one course. So we have financial accounting, uh, like introduction, and we have a financial accounting, which is intermediate accounting, uh, like, you know, 301 and intermediate accounting 302. I taught both of these classes, and which is a kind of advanced level of financial accounting as well. And after that, I taught also uh, advanced financial accounting, which is uh, 401, another different class actually for financial accounting. So I taught, and after that, I start with managerial accounting to help manager actually to make decisions uh, and followed by I'm teaching information systems how like teaching students how to build a database how to master your data to analyze your data to visualize your data I'm using uh, like you know tableau I'm using power pi uh, uh, doing that which helps students a lot and teaching them something about computerize a financial statement which is xdrl so I'm using technology you know and uh, I develop a new course this semester, uh, like, you know, which is your analytics, data analytics for accounting. Okay. And uh, it's my first time. I, I love it. I enjoy it. Uh, it was a challenge for me to come up with the materials to teach. But it ended up like I spend most of my time here preparing for the course, which is my choice. I just keep my research away. <laughs> I, I, you know, I like to do what I, what I love and actually, and I see students like it very much. And uh, I taught also that for master level, like, you know, couple financial course for master level. I taught that database enterprise for financial, for master level. I also introduced a, new, uh, a course before, but it's not there anymore, which is uh, like, you know, Islamic accounting, as he said, like, you know, financial accounting for or accounting for Islamic financial institutions. Uh, at the time, we have a minor and uh, I got excited with that minor at the time and he asked me to develop a course, but the minor right now is shrinking and that's why. And we are, we don't have too much faculty to offer like this course. Although it's, I believe it's very good for students and uh, they like it at that time. Uh, my style of teaching uh, depends on what I'm teaching actually. Like for master level, I'm using a kind of flipping classroom. Like I ask them to prepare beforehand. So when they come to the class, you know the topic and they have kind of preparation and these, you know, they talk and we can ha we have kind of discussions and dialogues. And that. Uh, for my introductory class, mostly it is a lecture, but that lecture joined with labs, like intro, like when I teach, like uh, I, uh, like you know data analytics. I, I mean, you know, there's a lot of labs. I call it labs, but we don't go to a lab, like it's computer lab, in which they have to work uh, with me at the same time. You know, through the inter, like online teaching right now is a kind of easy for me, but it's tough at the same time because I don't see 
like students who are there, if they struggle, they have to share with me and they're like, you know, it's a lot of time consuming and they have a problem. Uh, so it's not like easy as in classroom, I can like, you know, walk around and help them to fix it. So uh, I use labs, I, all, all of my class included projects in which students work in projects uh, actually together and uh, they present it. Uh, and I find it very, very successful. Like that's uh, about my teach the class I'm teaching. Uh, and thank you because I found out I, I taught about twelve courses <laughs> since I came here. So much. <laughs> I'm going to teach auditing next semester as well because Yas is leaving. Yas Khafaji is leaving, and they need somebody for auditing. And uh, I, I am the one who actually volunteer, and <laughs> it's a new challenge for me again. Thank you. All right, thanks for that. Well, I'm sure you'll be great as a, as a recipient of the teaching award. Uh, I'm sure that you will rise to the occasion if you have to teach auditing. <laughs> so, uh, Dr. Hassan, tell us a little bit, um, again, yeah, the classes you teach in, in your delivery style. Uh, thank you, Cindy. Uh, yeah, um, well, for those who don't know me, I, uh, I joined the AOS back in 1998, so I'm almost a, a pioneer here at this place, and uh, that uh, that gave me a lot of opportunities, uh, you know, in building the, you know, in participating, building the university and the college and our department. I had, of course, uh, in addition to the teaching, I had also several leadership roles, and and uh, also we established uh, uh, master programs in biomedical engineering, and hopefully we will be also having a PhD in bioscience and bioengineering. And throughout these years, I have taught at all levels, uh, 100 level, 200, 300, 400, 500, uh, uh, really quite a, a good number of courses. But of course, uh, in the last uh, 10 years or so, my emphasis was mainly on teaching uh, electronics, semiconductor materials, and uh, biomedical electronics and, um, uh, uh, and and biomedical instrumentations and of course advising a lot of uh, master students for their theses and uh, my my uh, my style in teaching really depends again uh, like what Ashraf said on the level of the students like in the 200 300 level usually the emphasis is on the on the students learning the science of electrical engineering, and that's there is a lot of abstract uh, th uh, thinking there, where I had to use um, where I have to use uh, computer simulations and animations and a lot of interactions with the students in order for them to grasp the the, the concepts. However, towards the senior level uh, courses and the graduate level courses, we use more uh, project based learning uh, style where students have to actually go to the lab and 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 and, and uh, uh, you know first of all they develop their own design then they go to the lab to uh, uh, implement the design and test it and and, and actually compare the theory that they have uh, uh, learned to the practice in in the laboratory so this is basically in a in a in a, in a nutshell what i'm what i have been doing All right, wonderful, thank you for that. Okay, so we've got a, a bit of an introduction to each of you, lots of different, different courses, uh, different teaching styles for sure. So let me ask you this, um, you know, so many times I think we probably teach in the way that we best learn, whether we realize that there's a connection there or not, oftentimes we do teach in the way that we like to learn. So my question to you is, who was your <coughs> favorite teacher? Who was your favorite teacher throughout all your years of school and why? And maybe we can just go in the same order again. Uh, if, if you've got an answer, if you don't have an answer, you can skip. Don't feel like you have to answer every question. But who was your favorite teacher and why? Well, since I'm in the, the hot spot <laughs> again, I don't really have one. I, I look, thought about this for days and days, and there is no one particular person. I did have many teachers who made maybe one observation to me or about something that we were studying that really sent me in a new direction. But the person who probably had the most influence on me was actually a mentor who was already in the business. And 
that that's my answer. I, I can't really go back and say this particular person, you know, in 80 years of school changed my life because so, so many, many teachers did make a huge difference to me. Okay. Okay. I like the idea that, uh, that maybe there are just a few small things along the way. Uh, that's probably just a good reminder for us. Um, sometimes it is just the small gestures along the way that, that make a big difference. So Ashraf, what about you? Do you have any thoughts, yeah. a favorite teacher? Yeah, I do. Actually, I agree with Sherry at the beginning that the Armenia actually contributes a lot to my teaching style and learning. But I remember one that has actually major influence in, in my teaching. And, uh, and in fact, I was asked to teach a, you know, account information system uh and it was a short notice like you know in which i follow like the book that you know my colleague like you know use it before and they don't have time to think about what should i do and it was a new class for me and he chose it because my dissertation title has kind of cio like chief information officer but it was actually i you know i keep telling them no it's it's only a title it is a, a kind of i that's the event right no you are your your information system guy so i I said, okay, I'm fine. So I taught the class uh, using that book, and I hate the class. I hate myself. <laughs> I think students so like you know. And I find the class is is not organized. The book actually, the chapters are not not linked together. I find it's not information system. That's something like you know, you know, some from engineering like to crime, like you know, computers crime to something law, business law through part of it accounting. So I decided to search because I'm gonna teach that course because a guy left the university and I, it is actually would be my neighbor for, for a long time. And I, I, I've been teaching that course until now. So I checked the, like, you know, the, we have a accounting, uh, like, you know, AAA, American Accounting Association. And uh, I'm a member and uh, I was, one time I found email, like, you know, or uh, like an ad actually about, you know, a boot camp in information system. And they said it is limited for 20 professors around the world. It, and there is no guarantee that you will be picked. You have to say why you would like to be in that camp. And I, I just put my justification and, uh, you know, thanks God, because maybe I'm the only one from Middle East that joined. So I went to Michigan University, like I traveled for one week boot camp. And the guy, they, like there are three teachers, at the, but Bill McCarthy, actually, one is, is the information system guy. That guy is very famous and uh, I know him from uh, research, but he has different way of teaching. Like, you know, that's the, he, he's something like, you know, when you hear about something, you, you can cow bath or you can re-engineer because Dr. Hassan is here. <laughs> he is re-engineering accounting. Like he's, he's trying to build accounting from different way that we, we think about it, building a database, sharing environment for everybody. And, and he is like in class, he is singing, he's moving, he's dancing, he's changing his clothes. Like, you know, he just, in, in between breaks, they find him different clothes. Like, you know, he give us cases about Marley Monroe and he asked people to dress like Marley Monroe, you know, Elvis Presley, like, you know, and he bring toys to the classroom. He bring like, you know, uh, you know, a lot of things outside the class to simplify. And I was like open my eyes, eyes. I've never seen that. I am in a stage here. It's not like a classroom. And I loved it actually at that time. And I start to, at that time I went to uh, Toys R Us and I brought with me Elmo and Cookie Monster because he used that one to make a case. And in my class, in my slides, I have all those Elmo and I, I make cases around these guys. You know, I, I bring actually toys from my son, uh, like little toys, and I use it to, you know, to simplify like a kind of difficult so like concept for my students. And they love it. And they, every time they ask me, they come to my office, where is Elmo? Like, <laughs> and the Elmo is, you know, it speak at the time, like I press a button, Elmo speaks and like, it was like, it was fun in the classroom. But the only thing I did not do it is like to change my clothes, like in the breaks, like <laughs> so, <laughs> I do not follow him, but he actually has a big influence in myself. So like me teaching fun and, uh, and he has a different way of teaching and I learned a lot from him. All right, thanks for that. Okay. Dr. Hassan, how about you? Any um, any favorite teacher? 
Well, I'm I'm like Sherry. I I, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember really a teacher that made a big impact. Uh, I mean, uh, just traditional methods, uh, lectures, exams. It, it was actually that you know, with time. I, I mean, when I started, I, I I used the same traditional methods, but with time you evolve, and then you realize that uh, being a teacher is, is, has more to do than just the exams and lectures and uh, more towards uh, giving students and transferring knowledge and, and uh, involving students in your research work and what you do as well and shaping their, you know, their, 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 their uh, thinking. So, uh, so yeah, so in a way kind of, um, uh, my contribution is, is, is kind of self-made. Of course, uh, uh, my old teachers had a big impact on, on me when it comes to knowledge and education, but not methodologies, I would say. Okay, well, that, that almost leads into my next question. It's the perfect segue. Um, I'm, am I, I am interested to know if any of you have a teaching philosophy and, and if you do, do you think that that philosophy contributed to you winning this award? And then if you also, if you do have one, do you think everyone should have one? Is, is having a teaching philosophy something that you would recommend? Sherry? Starting with me again. Um, I, first of all, I want to say something. To, when I heard um, Ashraf talking about this teacher, I'm sitting going, that's what I do in my classes. That's exactly what I do. I've had students say, I've never had a teacher just walk over and start playing a piano and singing in class. I said, I'm a singer. I'm a musician. This is what I do. But I think we all should be aware that we are performing, so to speak, for our students, especially now in these difficult times uh, when we're not in front of the classroom. I think those kinds of stylistic things uh, become much more important. Um, one of the things I was just going to, if I can, I'm kind of off subject, but I will answer your question. Um, I had to retool this, the sorts of examples that I was using, like many of us here today have been teaching for many years. And the things that worked in the 2000s, uh, that's, that's stale now. The kids I'm teaching today were hardly born with those examples I used to use. And so I've been challenging myself to find more examples. I was trying to uh, teach them the difference between simple and compound meter. And it's simply that one is divided into twos and the other is divided into threes, but it's very difficult for, to, for them to get from a visual standpoint. So the other day I put on, um, I put on Metallica <laughs> as one of the, the examples because it's a beautiful song and it's in compound rhythm. And as soon as I put that up, the little chap just ding, 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 and everybody's saying, I love that song. That was the first song I ever played on guitar. And they're going crazy about it. And I said, now you understand what it is. Oh, yes, yes, I've known that song all my life. Now that I know that it has a name, that you know, there's a, there's a certain uh, descriptor of it. Uh, and I said, please don't tell me when I played Metallica in class. But you have to step outside of your comfort uh, you know, boundaries. You have to come out and give them examples that speak to them and not the ones that you're comfortable with because I'm older than these kids' parents, I think. And I think that to keep myself uh, relevant to them, I need to do that. In terms of the teaching philosophy, yes. In fact, I have had one. I have one here. I can actually, um, I can actually show it to you really quickly. It's probably boring and you won't be able to read it, but it is here. Um, I wrote it many years ago because in the United States, the places that I was applying required this. In order to get a job, that was one of the, the <laughs> I will, I'll do my own maiden. I did, uh, Nothing Else Matters, Waleed. That was the song they all loved, Nothing Else Matters. Um, I had to turn this in in my packet of materials, you know, send an a letter of application, copies of your transcripts, and your teaching philosophy. So I had to write one. And I do, yes, believe that everyone should write one because it helps you to put really in perspective what you feel about teaching. We are here to teach and do research to a large extent, but teaching, in my opinion, is to, to me the most important thing because I'm not in a heavy research field. 
but I, I do believe that what my beliefs are about my teaching and as I step into the classroom are all kind of codified uh, in this example. And I'll be happy to email that to anyone who wants to see it, but I'm going to take it down now just because, anyway, there it is. <laughs> Okay, I'm I'm the second in the row. Yeah. <laughs> spot. Okay. Uh, actually, my teaching uh, like philosophy evolved over time as well. Like when I start teaching, I like you know a, a quote. I and I put it in my syllabus like everywhere. Like you you hear it, you forgot it. Yeah, you see it, uh, you understand it, you do it, you remember it. Like in accounting, I was first about, you know, the try to tell the students, like, you know, when you take like your exams for like that the way of evaluation, like or any assessment, uh, your ability to recall information and remember it is very important. It's like a kind of Bloom taxonomy, like, you know, in which like you have a kind of the first step, like you, you kind of have kind of understanding and remembering. And, and then actually I start, I, Evolved with applying, like you have to apply it, like what you what you understand and what you remember, you have to apply it, and, and that's why I started with projects to apply the knowledge they learned in, in the classroom. But later on, I I read a very interesting paper about I think D think, like you know about you know significant learning, and that paper actually, you know, has a big actually change in my in, in the way of teaching because in that paper she actually she is saying that you know uh, it, although teaching like in you know, the cognitive uh, information is important but uh, teaching is more than like you know teaching knowledge it's more than you know you you you, t you take the students and you help them and uh, and you make them believe they can achieve more than what they thought and that has would uh, actually you know, have a good feeling in, in the students, and they can they, it motivate the students to better, like in the future. And you see, I see it change when you see that it kind of caring. Like it's it's two things. Not all, yes, we teach knowledge for students, like facts, principles, relationship, equations, and but there is a like you know a kind of uh, interaction with the students, like a human factor. And when you emphasize that human factor with the students you will be amazed about how the students change like we are here teachers we are actually uh, um, we work is not like uh, we are mentors for the students we need to help them to achieve and everybody has kind of uh, a, a secret kind of spot like you know you need to find that secret like you know a, a component and you need to just motivate it in a way that you find the students change a lot and do better and they contact me after that i i'm you know, I, I remember one time I have students, I was teaching like how you, you do kind of conceptual model in database. And uh, in the first exam, she got about 30 out of 100. And she knows the second exam will be hard uh, because she has to develop the conception. But I, tr I told her, you're going to do it. Don't worry. She said, no, I can't understand. She came to my office. I said, you understand. And amazingly, she had the highest score. Like, you know, I was so happy. Mm -hmm like happy than her actually at that time she believed in her and herself and she, and since that time she told me i'm in a rank right now i moved and uh, that's why i believe that you know that's that's actually my philosophy of teaching like you know that care more about the you know, beside teaching knowledge the human factor is very important all right okay. I, I i presume i'm the head yeah please <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, yeah, actually, I'd like to spend a little bit of time uh, with, with this uh, issue of philosophy and uh, teaching experiences. Yes, I do have a teaching philosophy and, 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 and it's written, but I would like to focus on two main elements. Uh, the first element is uh, really to face uh, challenges. Uh, uh, in, in, of course, in teaching, in your, in your, in your career, uh, and 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 these challenges may need, may require some investigations and some research for, for, for uh, 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 in instruction as as a professor, as an instructor. And the second element is to make yourself available to students, and I, I literally I mean make yourself available to students 
almost all the time if you really want to support and help students. Uh, just a little story, uh, more than uh, 10, 15 years ago, um, when I was receiving my course evaluations, I, uh, I was, by the way, I was teaching uh, uh, electronics uh, and, uh, at the time, and um, a lot of the concepts taught in that course are abstract concepts, and students hear of them like for the first time. They, they, they're not taught like in school or even in, in, in first year physics. And the uh, students struggled to learn because once the lecture is finished, students, you know, they start wondering, uh, uh, how, I mean, what, where did this professor uh, bring all of this material? Uh, what did he say at this point? What did he say at that point? And, um, and I was receiving these comments from students that they are facing difficulty understanding these uh, concepts. So it occurred to me, why not make my lectures available to them all the time? That was, as I told you, more than 12, 13 years ago. So I asked our colleagues in the IT, can you help me record my lectures? At that time, uh, AUS, we did not have a recording of lectures. So our IT were, were very helpful, and still they are. And, and I started recording or lecture, as they say, lecture capture, all the material that I give, and I make it available to the students. And you won't believe the impact of, uh, of, of that exercise. The comments I received on the course evaluations were amazing. And the most important comment was that the, 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 uh, uh, this material helped them to understand the material and help them to succeed. This is the key issue now. We are, I am, now I feel that I'm helping the students to succeed, not just learn the material, but also succeed and get a decent grade. So uh, uh, with that experience, I uh, talked to Cindy Gunn at the time and we agreed why not share this experience with everybody. And, and we wrote an article actually that was published a few years ago. And guess what? This article is one of my highest cited articles, which is quite uh, 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 amazing really. And since then, um, uh, I went like uh, uh, online for all of the courses I teach. And when this online teaching came, you know, because of the pandemic, this was no news. I mean, it was just ready to hit the ground running, as they say, and, and posed no problem. So a problem that was uh, uh, raised by students gave me an opportunity to uh, find a solution to help students. Another, another uh, example that I'd like to share with you is about homework. Students, you know, they, 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 they're given homework to, of course, for, for various uh, reasons. And um, of course, it has a weight in the final grade. So, and students, they care about the grade. So they plagiarize and they cheat. Again, that's a challenge. Really, when you think about it, that's a serious challenge to professors. How can we tackle this problem? Of course, uh, there is no magic solution for it. But we did investigate it. Again, this was an, uh, this was an opportunity for the professor to investigate the matter, talk to the students, meet, you know, uh, uh, have, have like focus groups, have surveys to get real feedback on, on, on why are they cheating. Of course, we know that they're, uh, it's the grade, but why, why don't they solve the problem on their own uh, and, and get the grade? Well, obviously, they are not matured enough, and this is our findings. They were especially 200, 300 level students. They're not matured enough to appreciate the importance of trying and, and not getting an A, maybe getting a B. And, or, uh, and, and this B could be better than an A with cheating. So again, uh, uh, Cindy and myself, we worked on this issue and we, we went through the whole exercise and tried also to develop some techniques uh, for uh, helping the students. And, and one of the most successful methods that I found, I work with the students for solving the problem, having a, a help session, invite the students, and I say to them, come, let's work on this homework together. You do, you try, 
And if you're stuck, I'm here. I'm here to help you. This gave the students uh, uh, confidence in, in, in solving their homework problems and getting decent grades as well. And I also tell them, or I, 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 I always remember that professional ethics is extremely important. Academic, I mean, uh, uh, you may cheat now, but m uh, later on, uh, uh, you will you may not have a successful career so to have a successful career especially in engineering you must be ethical there is something called professional ethics and i keep bringing to them examples from real life stories of ministers and prime ministers who who lost their jobs and and they were in shame and maybe maybe ended up in jails because of of, of plagiarism and cheating those uh, 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 do, those exercises help to a certain extent in reducing the amount of, 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 of plagiarism. And, and one additional uh, exercise I also did that I grade you an attempt. Go ahead, show me your attempt, and I'll, 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 I'll give you most of the grade. This also helped in reducing. So exercises like this, actually, um, uh, uh, or, or op uh, let me say opportunities like this help me in, uh, uh, in, in, in teaching and help me to help students as well. Thank you. Thanks for that. Those are wonderful examples. Uh, and I think that they, they all demonstrate why you are a teaching award winner. So thank you for that. We appreciate that. Um, I wonder, Sherry or Ashraf, would you add to, uh, add to what Dr. Hassan just said? Do you have any um, any techniques that you have that work well with students? Anything that you would recommend? Ashraf, I defer to you. <laughs> Ashraf, do you have? Oh, you're Ashraf, you're you're muted. Okay. <laughs> I concur with Dr. Hassan that you know the uh, that we have a challenges and we need to stop like you know we need to face these challenges like and 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 the challenge actually accelerate at the time of online teaching. If you're going to talk about plagiarism right now, you have no control about what the students are doing. Like you know, my my daughter graduated last year and I was talking about you know lockdown browsers. He said that students have ways <laughs> to, to go over it. Uh, you, you name it, like, you know, students have kind of chatting groups, like, you know, in which, like, it becomes very tough for us and uh, and actually evaluate students because we find that honest students can be actually in risk right now. If you are more honest, uh, I know that it's going to come up, like, you know, I'm sure that what is honest now, it will pay off in the future. Uh, that's, like, my belief, like, you know, and whoever cheating like one time he would pay for all of this one time to, the, the bill will, will be very expensive mm -hmm. so one way is uh, like you know we try to even on online teaching we can contact like to talk to students one-to-one -one. like you know when i give them like when when i actually i, tr I try to monitor their performance over time and uh, i just one time i make a a quick check, like after the class, I said, okay, I want to talk to you for five minutes. I know that he would have 15 minutes. So, and I start to ask him concept and they uh, like questions for how he do that. How, and I can figure out whether he did the work himself or herself, or this is kind of, he borrowed from somebody. And I motivate students not to do that. Like, you know, I, tell, I like uh, Dr. Hassan said, like, you know, there's a lot of stories outside and the, it, is no like the it's ending line like you know there is no success with that so that's very important that it's a it's a challenge uh and also maybe one more things like i'm going to add here students at the end of the day they're going to learn like you know we provide them like with concept with like kind of uh, whatever information they're going to learn but the most important thing that they learn something is significant like you know environment is changing rapidly out there so it's very good when we design our course or uh, and 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 that actually will help the students not to cheat by, by the way if the if the new like for me i'm teaching like kind of power bi uh, tableau which is a kind of technique of visualization you know send about that 
a student, I tell the students you're gonna use it. Like, you know, you're gonna, if you sit in an interview and uh, you, you can impress actually the guy who interview you about your knowledge about that. If you can tell them I did a project and you talk about your project. Uh, if, you, if you show him like what, your work actually, that's gonna be a big difference. And at and, and, and that time you learn something that's gonna help you in the future. If you try to get an A now, it's an easy A, but in the future, you will be in a big disadvantage. And students actually believe in that. When they see numbers, when they see like the, the, most of the jobs right now for the people who have kind of these skills right now, take technology skills and how you use it in accounting and auditing and stuff like that, how we're gonna improve the, like, you know, their performance in work to get a good job in that competitive world. world. So once the students you know that, you know, that, how significant is what we are teaching them, they will change in their attitude as well. Those right. are great ideas. Oh, I was just gonna say, I'm not sure I have too much to add to that other than I try to make my quizzes because I do teach creative subjects where it's not just a memorization of facts so much. But the, the final exam, for instance, in that Music 101 class, is writing your own song even the exam is writing your song but it's very much you know dumbed down and i mean shortened it's not as long as the final project which they had the whole semester to work on but if there's certain parameters well you can't really cheat on that because everyone's composition is going to be different and the same with even the the music history class i try to give uh exam questions that are overarching that are not just don't just give me the facts tell me what changed from this century or this era to the next era and just use some examples but don't just put random facts in there that's not what i'm looking for even though sometimes the quizzes are about that at the end of the semester they need to be able to talk and talk well about a subject just uh, just this recently just a couple of weeks ago one of my uh, students contacted me and said, I was so impressed with myself. A question came up last night at the dinner table about, well, what kind of music is that? And she said, I knew the answer. And everybody <laughs> was looking at me. And so the class that I teach here at AUS is not going to get anyone a job since we don't have a major in music, but it makes them a well-rounded human being. It makes them the person that everyone wants to talk to at the parties. It makes them just, have knowledge for knowledge's sake in the sense that it enriches them as a human being. So I don't know how to let how to make students cheat any better than the next person, but I try to make it to where that the exams are broad enough that they can't really do that. It's a very personal response while still showing me their knowledge. All right, that's great. Thanks. So um, we're, we're getting close to the end of our time. Uh, let me just ask, as teachers, as, as winners, <laughs> as excellent teachers, do you have one thing that you would suggest to others to improve their teaching? We've talked a little bit already about some of this today. I think that there have been some examples of spending time with students or really paying attention to the human side um, of, of the student, right? They're not just somebody in your class to learn, but there's someone to know and to invest in. Anything else, any, any tips that you would pass along to others? You want, you want me to start yes. this time? Yes. <laughs> how, yeah. how about that? Let's go in reverse order. <laughs> Dr. Yeah. Maybe I would uh, recommend really strongly to my colleagues to uh, embrace student comments and feedback. And, and uh, you know, uh, this, this will open the door for great number of, of challenges and opportunities to improve your, uh, your teaching uh, skills as a teacher, as, a, as an instructor. Uh, I must admit, like in the old days, we, we we kind of look at the student comments um, um, in a in a defensive manner, I must say. But you know, with time, you realize no, there is a lot more to student comments and 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 the challenges they raise and the problems they raise. 
and and uh, uh, they could be they could open the door for you as a professor to improve and be a better professor. So that would be the one thing that I would advise my colleagues. I think that's great. And, you know, sometimes I even have to, uh, whenever we get that email and it says, hey, your comments are available, sometimes I even have to check myself and I think, okay, yeah. I'm probably not in the best mood right now. So I probably should wait and read this later because you're right. Sometimes my, I, I'm just defensive immediately. Yeah, 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 yeah. So even for me, I have to be sure that. This is, a, this is a natural human reaction. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. Thanks. Ashraf, Sherry, anything uh, that you might share for people to improve their teaching? Yeah, I agree with Dr. Hassan in, in a way that say, look at the student's evaluation. And actually more than that, because one of the questions, if you, something you, you wish you have done last semester, <laughs> is to, you do survey, you survey students. The, if you care about improvement in your teaching, like, you know, so you survey students, you might ask the question you would like to see the, uh, and don't be offensive, like, you know, and and what the survey is doing actually, because it, there's a lot more to add. The survey is shrinking actually, because there's a lot more to add, but there is no much more time to add everything. Like, you need to, you need to see, brutalize it, like to see which one comes first, which one second. So the survey actually helps to shrink the link, the list, and uh, and and you listen with an open mind to students and don't take it as a criticism. It's a way of improvement that that that's very important. And again, go back to caring. I like you know if you show caring, like you know I, that's actually very important. Like you know, you be empathetic with the students. Like you care about their their actually performance in the classroom be close to them like you know and that will help it, it, because the students when you become closer they don't want to actually they feel like you know if they are not doing good in your class that's a kind of shame and they improve because of that close uh, attention you have with them yeah that's great thanks um so I, uh, I usually survey as well. May, I, I, may I, I add one additional advice also, please? Um, one additional advice to my colleagues, professors, especially the young professors as well, to make yourself available to students, to be present during office hours, to respond to students' emails, because students do need their professors and they and and when they when they write to you when they come to your office it means they really need you because students usually the, the, the learning may not be on the top of their agenda sometimes it's a fact so when they come to you when they write to you it means a really need for you so don't send them away don't repair, don't just ignore their emails no uh, 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 respond to them and, 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 and help them as much as you can. Help them to succeed, put it that way. Help them to succeed. If I can go ahead and take my turn now. Yeah, that's a good point. B is better than do. One of the things that really threw me for a loop was when we went to remote teaching. All these things I was doing in the classroom because I do think of it more as sometimes a performance. You know, you're you're in an interactive audience situation with your students. But <clears throat> I had to spend last summer basically retooling a lot of things about myself and my teaching because all of a sudden I'm not in the classroom anymore where I could get student response and feedback immediately. There's so much you can learn from their body posture, from their eyes, and that was all gone. So I spent part of the summer look at reading these two books, and this one, especially on the left, this uh, Flower Darby's book, Small Teaching Online, had some great ideas. And when she says small teaching, she doesn't mean that it's not important. She means that it's it's concentrated and focused, kind of small, like a spotlight is very small, rather than a large uh, diffused light. The other one was this 99 tips for creating simple and sustainable educational videos. Now that we're all online, and video is, is what we are. It's what we are. We're, we don't have all the in-person cues and so forth. 
the hardest thing for me is not seeing my students. That's really difficult. So one of the things that I've done is make their assignments into videos. Uh, just uh, this past week, they had to build a laryngeal a model of the larynx of, for singing, a laryngeal anatomical model out of paper. And I gave them the, the assignment. It was a PDF file that they could cut. And they had to glue and they had to, you know, put little hinges in there so it showed the movement of the anatomical parts. And rather than turning that in or submitting it, what I had them do was do about a 15 second video on their, their smartphones and email that to me. And I graded it based on how um, clear their description was, whether they really understood what the anatomy was going, what was going on in that, in that anatomical model. So I tried to kind of flip my teaching into more video sort of things, both from me and from them. And so now when I give uh, a quiz or a midterm, which is coming up tomorrow, I've got one of each in two different classes. I sometimes, I didn't do it for this particular class, but I have often in the past year made a video, just me standing here, at the, sitting here at this computer like I am now saying, I bet you want to know what to study for the quiz. Here are the things. And I will list them off and then put some, it doesn't take very long. There are programs to do this. One of the ones I use is a Canva and the other is Animoto. Both of those are free that you can uh, find online. And just you know, to wrap that up, I think that we need to make it where everyone can understand because as this Einstein quote, I thought this was really cute. For a fair selection, everybody has to take the same exam. Please climb that tree. Well, obviously the monkey's over here smiling his head off and the bird's okay with it, but what's the elephant gonna do? And the penguin and the goldfish and the seal, you know, these, these, even the dog's gonna have a hard time with that. So while we do have to give the same exam, we also have to provide ways during that exam for each kind of student to excel in a different way. As Einstein said, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. And we do not want that for our students. So the, I would recommend either of these books, and obviously uh, Norita is here as well, and she loves that book. It's a great book. Um, that's where I got the idea to visually communicate with video, to communicate with my students through video and not just write everything down as an announcement and then throw it up on the um, iLearn website. And they've really enjoyed that. The other thing I did, and I won't play it in the interest of time, but I do a 55 second introduction, introducing me video before I ever see my students. I've done just a little something that, um, it's 55 seconds. I created it on Animoto and it tells about my family. It tells, uh, I have a grandson. It tells my husband is an engineer. Uh, it tells that we built a cabin in Alaska that I used to be a ski instructor at Breckenridge. And it just gives these odd, unusual facts about me that make me seem human to them and not like some professor at AUS. Instead, I'm an actual person with an actual life, and I really love my life, but the most important thing is music, and it's my job to make you love music as much as I do. So that's it. Yes, I may, I may add something to Sherry because she reminded me by, I ask students to put uh, like their okay, one slide a profile. I put mine actually, a profile which is some like information about myself, some funny information, what I like more, and a picture because I want to remember my students like I want to match their names with their faces so I asked them to put actually one slide and in a, and I I give them points for it like you know to encourage everybody to do it and they put some funny from and I ask them if I have like you know I look at my class if I finish every five minutes I ask some to present it like you know and by the end of this like you know maybe the first one month like you know everybody would present his slide and it, it has a lot of things to know about the students and jokes and uh, like, you know, uh, and uh, it's good for, for one way, even in the future, if I forgot the student's name, I go back to the slide and when I saw him, oh, I, I call his name. Oh, you still remember me? I said, <laughs> <laughs> so it helps a lot, like, you know, to build this kind of environment with the students. Yeah, that will be great. And, and especially if, uh, if we are, on campus for final exams, you have that resource to go back and watch these videos and figure out who is yeah. whom. 
So exactly. you'll actually know their names when they walk into your classroom. So wonderful. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, there are resources. Sherry had mentioned this video that she put together, and um, obviously people can do that for themselves. But I know that uh, Narita and Walid and Noor would be happy to help you with that as well. If that's something you want to do and don't know how to start, uh, please reach out. That's exactly why CITL, CITL is there. So uh, please do reach out and uh, they'll be happy to help you. So again, congratulations to our award winners. Um, we thank you so much for spending your afternoon with us. Just helping us understand why you are so good at what you do. <laughs> we want to be like you. So thank you for sharing. Uh, thank you for sharing your wisdom. Uh, thank you for spending the time with us today. Thank you, thank you for inviting us. Thank you, yeah. Cinda, Cindy. Thank you, Norita. Thanks uh, to everybody. It was really a pleasure being part of the, this meeting. Thank you.